Hello, everybody. Welcome to Townsend 505. We'll put Tower up there because he's my main guest for this series. Today, me and Tyler, we're going to be continuing our amazing journey through the ACDC series. Uh, joining us today for this episode is Scott from uh, Sound Lab Studios. Yep. Uh, how are you guys doing today? Doing good. Here to review the Stairway to Heaven, Elf. <laughs> uh, Wait a minute. Yeah. Wait, what? Did I take a wrong turn? You took a wrong turn at Albuquerque, my friend. No, no, I want to go back. I thought this was the stairway to heaven. I don't we're taking. Where. We're going. We're uh, we're going to jump in a car in our cars. We're going to go down the highway to hell. And um, what are you? What what's your guys' brief thoughts on the album before we begin? Scott, you're the guest. You go first. Oh, okay. Um. Tyler is a much bigger fan of ACDC than I am. There is a select few albums that I think are pretty good, and this was one of them. So I'm like, I'll join on all the ones that Mutt Lang produced because I, I feel like Mutt Lang added a little something to their sound that made them like extra good. So this is when he joins on, and so that's the, well, the first one I wanted to help review. But overall, I think that this marks a notable improvement from ACDC sound partly because of Mutt Lang's more polished production. I, when I was listening through the discography with Tyler, I like heard this album and was like, there is a noticeable difference in their sound on this album. And he's like, well, it's because Mutt Lang started producing them with this one. So um, I also think that Bon Scott's uh, like songwriting is a lot better on this one too. Um, he's really stepping into his own as a front man. Really sad that he died right after this album because like they were they were on their way up. Yeah, um, this is another really good album. It's one of the best albums, their second best-selling album. Uh, it was very successful for a good reason. And like Scott had mentioned, we have a noticeable shift in the way their albums sound, production. That's to do with um, one of the most well-known producers in rock, Mutt Lang. That's why I've uh, changed my name. Uh, no longer Vanda and Young. But uh, it is now Mutt Lang. But it wasn't always like that. So, uh, Nick, uh, what do you think about this album? I think this is a really good album. Spoiler, spoiler alert. I have every song from the album on my ACDC Essential playlist. Nice. So, I should tell you how I feel about the album. Um, I do like Power Rage slightly better than this album. Just slightly. Yep. Just, so just does slightly. Tyler. Just, we're just for we're splitting hairs at this point. Exactly. It's not like, oh, this is a big step down. This is, oh, this is horrible. Power Rage is way better. No, it's like, just, uh, just by, by air, by, by a tiniest of hairs, I prefer Power Rage. But, uh, but yeah, this is a great album. Um, I had a, I had high expectations going into it, and uh, they, they met with my expectations. Going into the series, I had, I didn't have the highest expectations, and they're, they're they're really they're like really they're, they're my expectations are going up more up and up as I'm going through this discography, which is a really good thing because my expectations were low going into the debut. Now it's like up here. It's like ah uh, big big compliments to uh, none of that, but I, I agree the songwriting's really good. Um, I would have loved another Bon Scott album. Oh yeah, it, it is what it is. Um, just got to let it be. Um, hey, the next the next album is his tribute album, at least. So, yes, but uh, we get the first track on the album. We all know it. Background information. We're on a highway to hell. Shoot, I was gonna do some background information. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. Give us your okay. Information. So, um, ACC was again gonna consult uh, Van Den Young for this album like they normally did. Atlantic Records, uh, however, uh, thought different, said, hey, you guys are really on the cusp of being really big stars. You just need a different producer to change your sound. And so they sent them uh, to Miami to collaborate with producer Eddie Kramer. Who, who also works with Zeppelin. Zeppelin and Kiss and Jimi Hendrix. So they're down in Miami and when they met Eddie, he said, can your guys sing? 
And it's like, that's how you open. That's crazy. And so they didn't get along with Eddie. Uh, they didn't really do a whole, whole lot. So they heard about this guy, Mutt Lane. Uh, they told uh, Eddie they're going to take the weekend off. They instead went Saturday and uh, uh, cooked up a couple songs and sent them to Mutt. And they're like, hey, can you work with us? And he's like, sure. And so they moved to London. And so this is where this, uh, uh, this album is recorded in London. So uh, he pretty much whipped them into shape, making a well-oiled rock and roll machine. Uh, their energies are very different. So you see, you see their band is very spontaneous. And all that's just what we call it. But Mutt Lang is very perfectionist, very opposite of that. And so he gave... Uh, Especially uh, Bon Scott, a lot of good tips on his vocal technique. So uh, I think his vocals are much different in this album uh, than the other ones. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much background. Again, this album was really successful. They went on a big tour. Finally, now they're the they're they're uh, they get other people to open for them because before this. They were opening for other bands on tour. And this is the, the first album where they start to get uh, more successful. And of course we have this the infamous album cover that caused, you know, caused uproar. Uh, but uh, during their tour, they did film one of their performances. I have the live concert film here, ACDC Let There Be Rock. It's from their Highway to Hell tour. Uh, they did a show in Paris. It's kind of like a Led Zeppelin's concert film, but um, it's a little bit better. No weird dream sequences, though. Yeah, it's it's just very straightforward. They have a song, but it does it is intercut with little interviews and fun little things that happen. My favorite um, interview on there is when Bon Scott is talking about like some of the other bands that they get to tour with. He's like, "We're torn with this little known Canadian group called Rush," and I was like, oh, "Yeah." yeah. <laughs> They're opening for ACDC, so that's fun. But yeah, that's uh. Uh, a bunch of my background information, so, yeah. Cool, let's get right into the track listing, the first track on the album. We all know it. Highway to hell! Um, I'll let you go first, Scott, since, uh, you're, uh, since you're the guest. So, right out the gate, you get that signature guitar riff from Angus Young. It just hits you. Bow, now, now. Bow, now, now. And this is really where Mutt Lang comes into play. The biggest thing that he did that I noticed was the sound that he put to Phil Rudd's drums. I don't know what he did to Phil Rudd's drums, but like Phil Rudd has already like has a really great feel for keeping time. When you match that with Mutt Lang's production, it just sounds like Phil Rudd is just right there on the beat and his drums are super crisp and just cut through the mix. So as soon as Phil Rudd comes in, and then like the other thing he did was he uh, found a way to interplay that very well with Cliff Williams bass as well. So, oh, and then you, yeah, of course you just added Malcolm and it just completes the sound, but um, very solid rhythm on this song. And then Angus's guitar solo is very good as well. Not to mention Bon Scott singing. Um, Bon Scott is vocally at the top of his game on this album. This is just the culmination of the Bon Scott years, in my opinion. Yeah, this this is quite an album. Quite a way to open your song, too. Oh, open your album with this song. And yeah, Bunt Lang really turned them up a notch, uh, several notches. He helped improve all of the band members. Uh, Mutt Lang actually came up with a solo for Highway to Hell. Oh, wow. He was telling him, here, put your fingers here on the fretboard. And, and that was, he, he actually came up with that solo, which is pretty cool. And yeah, yeah, it sounds more I, odd because it sounds more composed. Now that you mentioned that, I, it doesn't surprise me. Mm -hmm. Angus is usually very spontaneous, like, <laughs> like just noodling around. This this solo sounds very composed with that wow, bam, 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 but that's a very yeah. popular blues. That's leg. Mutt Lang. Yeah, Mutt Lang really improved all the, and, uh, he had a lot of focus on Phil Rudd with the drums. Uh, yeah, and of course, you know, Bon Scott is, this is, his, I think, his best vocal performance. 
uh, of the five albums. And yeah, there is a, you know, during the recording, uh, Mutt Lang was saying, hey, come on, do it this way, do it this way. And Bon Scott got angry and he was like, why don't you do it? You're so good. And he went up and did it. He was so good. <laughs> and then it's like, okay, I'll have to listen to him now. But uh, yeah, this is, uh, everyone knows the song. Even if you don't know this band, everyone knows the song. It's on the radio all the time. Uh, it's one of the probably their most popular song. You hear it in movies, you know. I think last time Iron I Man first, Two. I first I heard it in Mega Mind. <laughs> yeah, Mega Mind. Uh, it's in uh, Iron Man Two at the end. Ace DC was heavily featured in the first two Iron Man films. Um, yeah, wonderful song to open. Um, Jason commented, I'm guessing this is one of the big ones. I'm guessing. Oh, yeah. Yes. This one and Back in Black, kind of the, the two big ones. Yeah, I think you saw them off the album wise. Yeah, this is a big album for them. Uh, my opinion on this song? Um, I hate it. It's the worst. Oh. Album. <laughs> no. I mean, I, I gave it already. All these songs are my essential ACDC playlist, so. You know, of course, of course, everyone knows I'm lying now. Uh, <laughs> this song is awesome, of course. Obviously, it has to be in my top five, and it is. Just despite it being played a lot on classic rock radio, I have I can't help myself but love it. Still, I love the way that that Bond is singing it. I'm on a highway to hell. Uh, this is definitely one of his best lead vocals that he's done so far. Really, really kicked it up and kicked it up a notch. Um, I mean, what else is there to say about this song? This is a legendary song for them. It's awesome. Uh, we get to the next song on the album. Which, what's cool about the sound is that all these songs. I think I don't know if it's because it's streaming services, but the songs kind of blend into each other. Like it kind of goes from one song right into the next. It's, it's like that on the album too. It definitely yeah. feels a lot more cohesive than their other albums up to this point. Even though this is not my favorite, I still think Power Rages. I agree. Uh, we get to the next song. Right away, we get into Girls Got Rhythm. Okay, so this this song is Bond just putting out the energy. Uh, him and Angus. Angus's guitar playing is really good on this one. Of course, Angus always had that school uniform that he would just roll around on the floor and keep playing and he wouldn't mess up which i don't i don't understand how he does that i don't know if he did that in the studio that would be kind of funny if he did that in the studio whenever he plays live like he just like rolls around on the floor and jumps up and down and like he looks like a little gremlin running around like he <laughs> <It> is. <laughs> he, make, he makes the he makes like a little gremlin face and he like goes like and he like he'll like he'll, like, he'll, like run around yeah and he'll go like and this is definitely one that I can see him bopping along to whenever he's playing. Um, funny joke: when I was when I was uh, listening to this album to prepare for the video, this video came up and I suggested called "Squirrels Got Rhythm," and it said it was remixing this song, and it was just a picture of a squirrel. I'm like, oh boy, that's so stupid. But uh, this was this another one that I know a lot of the songs like pretty much. All, not like all, but most of the songs on this album have like music videos filmed for it. Was this another one that had a? Uh, I don't think so. Hmm. I think it was Highway to Hell, Walk All Over You, Touch Too Much, Shot Down in Flames, and If You Want Blood. There's like five, I think. Okay. But uh, yeah, yeah. This uh, uh, you all done? Yes. Okay. So, yeah, this is a great song to. Keep the momentum going. The opening, big opening song. This one goes right in and keeps the the fast rhythm going. And yeah, this is this is another really good song. I I really enjoy this. Is a lot. All oh, these songs are really good. Uh, and yeah, that riff comes right in, right in after uh, the end of the first song. And it's just. You know, this girl's got rhythm, and that's pretty much it. And uh, another thing that's really, um, I love the backing vocals. I haven't really talked about this a lot, but uh, Angus, uh, I mean, not Malcolm and Cliff are really good doing backing vocals. Because before this, it was just Malcolm. Because uh, the other bass player, uh, Mark, 
he didn't really do backing vocals. And that's part of the reason why they hired Cliff is because he could sing. And so I feel like with Mutt Lang putting the touch on it, the backing vocals really pop in this album, I believe. And this is another one where there are some songs that uh, all I really want to do is sing with the backing vocals. <laughs> and it's really fun. And this is one of them. I really like the backing vocals. There's another outstanding song on the album. Um, I love the groove of it. It has a nice groove to it. Uh, the backing vocals really kills it. Uh, I think it really brings it above the edge. Um, chorus, girls got rhythm. Girl got rhythm. <laughs> it's just one of those songs. It's like, oh, man. You know, I know they get criticized for for like every song that they had that they kind of just, they all had like that same, like they all, all the songs have a chorus with the name of the song, but who cares? The song is awesome. I love it. I can't I mean, help if it. you do something well. <laughs> I love this track. This is a great song. Um, next song on the album. We, we, we get, we get, we get to a big song. Uh, Walk all over you. Okay. So, this one is really cool. Um, one of Bon Scott's best vocal performances on this album, in my opinion. Um, I like kind of the changing feels, how like whenever you get to the chorus, it kind of gets some more <laughs> as Phil Rudd. Um, great playing on here from Angus Young as well. Uh, this is this is one of the one of the best songs on the album. All right, now we, it's a, I think it's a longer, I don't, I think it's, it's not quite the longest song, but it's the longest one on the first side anyways. Uh, I, this is another great song. Oh my goodness. Uh, and it's a lot slower. We slow down a little bit. And, uh, oh my goodness, this song is so good. How do they do this? This like banger after banger, they keep going. Uh, yeah, I love, this is another really good song. Uh, again, Backing vocals are really cool in this song. Bon Scott delivers a great performance, of course. The rhythm section is locked in every time. Cliff's got rhythm. Cliff's got rhythm. Well, my opinion on this song. I really, 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 really like this song. This is my favorite ACDC song. Oh, so wow. This is my all-time favorite ACDC song. I, don't, I think you need some more really. Pick. What's that? I think you need to ha say really a couple more times. I didn't quite get it. <laughs> really, 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 really good. This <laughs> really, 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 really good. good. It just it starts off kind of slow with the boom, 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 boom. It just gets faster, and it just like. You get like Bon Scott singing his heart out. And that chorus, walk all over you. This song never gets old. This is one of the songs I really knew from them because ah, uh, this this song's a masterpiece in my opinion. This is uh, I wonder I wonder what my favorite song in the album is. Whoa, <laughs> it couldn't be Night Prowler, could it? <laughs> Perhaps, but uh. Yeah, this the song is awesome. I love it so much. And then uh, that song goes right into uh, "Touch Too Much." Okay, so when I was listening to this album for the first time, I'm like, "This is like I don't know what they're doing different about this album, but it's uh, I'm liking I'm really liking it." And when I got to this song, I'm like, "This almost sounds like ACDC." doing almost a new wave sound but without this the clean like production of it like it like it has all the good production value but it's not exactly like a lot of new wave is like very polished and stuff it has all the rawness of acdc but yet the clean production of new wave music and i love it um especially phil rudd's drums yes phil rudd's drumming on this song is amazing it almost, it almost sounds like acdc makes the cars <laughs> Kind of. That's the, be that's the best <laughs> way I can describe it. Uh, but, like, it, it, I wouldn't exactly say it's, like, a, a full-out-blown pop song. It still leans more towards the heavy rock, but, like, 
it, it has more pop leanings on it. Not it, It's not like the closest thing ACDC would do to a pop song is Money Talks and uh, Razor's Edge, but like this is, might be the second closest. But I don't know. I It's a very different sound for them, and I really like it. Uh, if you want a, a hint, check the name I gave myself on the video. It's the producer. Yep. Mutt Lang is a very uh, radio pop sensible uh, producer. I can hear that a lot with uh, his dealings with Def Leppard. And I'm not, I'm not the one, like, I love progressive rock. Watch my Genesis series, but like, I'm not, I'm not one who whenever it's like, oh, radio friendly, oh, get it out away from me. Like, I really like whenever you have a good production to your song, good production to your album. Like, I, li I like Steely Dan for crying out loud. They're, they're like the masters of studio production. Like, if, if you if you got good production to your song, like, I think that's amazing. And Mutt Lang, Mutt Lang really did something to them with this album. Oh, yeah. And this song especially. So, that is uh, my thoughts. Oh, and Angus Young's guitar is amazing on this one. Of course. Yes, Touch Too Much is another great song. Oh, my goodness. So many good songs. Hard to make a top five of this album. Uh, but, yeah, Touch Too Much. Uh Yes, the drum, the production is really nice on the song. The drums, the backing vocals, Bond singing, Angus, all the guitars are amazing on this album, on this song. Uh, yeah, it's another really good song, that driving rhythm. Okay. Um, this is a really, really good song. Um, sadly, this did not make my, this didn't make my top five uh, funny enough. It's really good, but you know, I can't have all ten of these songs in my top five. Uh, True. True. Um, going back to what you guys were saying about radio friendly, uh, I like things that sound radio friendly when it works. You know, like Genesis, like when they were doing Duke and uh, not Duke uh, when they're doing Invisible Touch. That's a radio friendly album. Like, I'm I'm not I'm also the kind of same way. Like as long as as long as it sounds good, I don't care if it's radio friendly as long as the song works and it has a good structure and it doesn't sound like it's going all over the place. I, I like, I like, uh, the radio friendly sound. Um, so what it, this should, this should have been a big hit. Honestly, this song, uh, yeah. it sounds like a hit song. Uh, yes. we get to the last song on side one being around the bush. You know, this song reminds me of another classic rock song, but I can't quite put my name. I can't quite put my finger on the name. Maybe it'll come to me later. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a that's a joke, by the way. This this sounds a lot like Oh Well by Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. The main guitar riff. It's it's different okay. enough though. This used to be my favorite song on the album, but whenever I heard Oh Well, I'm like, wait a second, Angus. It's still in my top five. It's a really epic song. Uh, I love who it just goes. But da But da And then Bon Scott, man, Bon Scott is on fire with this one. Insane vocals here. And then I like when it all just cuts out and it goes beating around the bush. But yeah, it, it's uh, it's it's one of the five. It's in my top five. Yeah, and you got a really nice, uh, uh, fast song to end the first side. Really good side closer. And kinda yeah, like, the beginning. Uh, sorry, sorry for interrupting, but it's kind of like a rocker from Dirty Deep. Yes. Reminds me of that one. Yeah, this this is a really good song to oh, to uh, close your side. Uh, just very fast and. Uh, you know, you have that guitar riff starting out, and then everyone else kicks in, and the drums. And oh my goodness, uh, yeah, Bon Scott, amazing on this on this song, and pretty much this whole album, he's just really the top of his game in this album is really good. I really like this song. Um, this is in my top five. Uh, amazing way to close out the first side of the album. I'm um, really liking the playing on here. Um, this is it's an amazing song. It's it's crazy. Side one is perfect. I 
one of the best side ones in like rock history, in my opinion. You got like four out of these five songs are in my top five: uh, "Highway to Hell," "Girls Got Rhythm," "Walk Walk All Over You," and this song. Four out of the the fact that four out of these five songs are in my top five just goes to show how great this first side is. Not not that the second side is any weak or anything, but it just goes so goes to show how great this first side is. That side one just has all these fantastic songs on it. But uh I don't have my album with me, but uh Tyler, flip the record over. Side two. Yep. <laughs> uh we get to the next song on the album, uh The Camera Eye. Uh <laughs> Okay, in all, in all, in all, in all seriousness. Uh, Wait a minute. What, what, what happened? Where did we go? What? <laughs> You're telling me ACDC did it first? That's I'm going to have to have some words with Getty Lee. <laughs> That's crazy. And, and, and Neil Peart as well. Uh, next, in all seriousness, the next song in the album, Shot Down in Flames. Okay. I, I'm pretty sure this is a big concert staple for them. Yeah. Tyler will probably talk more about that, but I can see why. Um, this is one that really would get the audience going, and Angus Young's guitar playing. Oh, my goodness. It is amazing on this one. One, two! And there we go. Ron Scott, once again, is at the top of his game vocally, so... Yes, yeah, shot down in flames. Uh, yeah, this is another concert staple, along with, of course, the title track. Uh, and they would do other songs from this album uh, sporadically after the Highway to Hell tour. Uh, of course, they pretty much did a, in a bunch of the first side of this album were concert hits throughout the years. And, of course, uh, I think they would also do If You Want Blood. Uh, but, yeah, the Highway to Hell and Shot Down in Flames are big concert staples. Always play them. And yes, I love this is one of my favorite songs. I love the opening, the riff, and then one, two, and then it, everyone just comes in right after. And uh, yeah, a song about getting rejected, getting shot down in flames, you know, trying to, you know, you know, shoot your shot, you miss kind of song. It's pretty fun. I enjoy it. I like this song. I think it's a pretty good song. Um, this is um, this didn't make my top five, but this is a really good song. Um, I think this is a great way to open up the first, uh, the second side of the album, a uh, great first song on it, um, keeping the momentum going. Um, I like it; it's a really good song. Um, but yeah, it's the next song on the album. Get it hot. Um, this one is good. However, I will say I don't like this as much as what's come before it or what comes after it. This is probably my least favorite on the album, but it's, it's still pretty good. Yeah. This is, uh, if we're going to rank this album, this is definitely um, the song at the bottom, in my opinion. I still, It's still a pretty fun, fast song. And, you know, funny enough, there's a demo version of this, uh, and it's actually six minutes. So they end up cutting it down all the way to two minutes. And um, I haven't heard that demo version in a while. But uh, Get It Hot is a pretty fun song. It's not too bad. It's not terrible. Not like terribly offensive in any way. It's like, this, this is so bad. But uh, Not like Hats Off to Roy Harper. Uh, yeah, right. right, right. Uh, but yeah, this uh, I like Get It Hot. It's fun. You know what oh. they say, when you're hot, you're hot. <laughs> when you're hot, you're hot. <laughs> <laughs> I have my dog in this real mean. Um, I really like this song, actually. I probably like it the most out of everyone here. Um, okay. <laughs> I really like this song. Yeah, this is uh, th this also didn't make my top five, but I think this is a really good song. I I personally re really enjoyed it. Uh, it's the shortest song on the album, so it's not there for too long. I really like it. Um, it's probably my sixth favorite song on the album. Ooh. Um, we get to the next song in the album. If you want blood, you've got it. Okay. This, this is one of the best, if not the best song on the album. 
we'll see when we get to my top five. But this is where it gets really cool. I guess his guitar playing is really good. And Bon Scott, this is his best vocal performance on this song right here. I'm going to just go ahead and say it. I think this is Bon Scott's best vocal performance. Um, he just kind of screams out this one. If you want blood, you got it. And I think it's really cool, the music video where he stabs Angus with his guitar. <laughs> uh, forever immortalized on the live album. <laughs> All right, yeah, this uh, this is my favorite song. This is this is my favorite song on this album. Um, very peculiar title, seeing that we already had an album with that title, live album. Uh, so Bon, it's kind of Bon Scott came up with that title. Uh, they were doing a show and they had a pretty pretty rough crowd, and it's like, what do you guys want? You want blood? You want blood? And he's like screaming at the crowd, and that's how they come up with the title of the song. Pretty fun. Uh, yeah, and I, I actually kind of forgot to mention this, but um, the title was actually came up. Uh, they were doing an interview, and I think the interviewer was asking Phil Rudd, or so it's like, what's it like, you know, going, you know, driving around on tour on these buses? Like, it's like a highway to hell. It's awful. <laughs> the rigors of, you know, driving everywhere on that bus and waking up and the smellers, the, the singer stinky socks are right next to your face. <laughs> It's like, oh, it's so bad. Uh, and there's actually a road in Australia called the Highway to Hell because there's a part of it where it kind of like there's no speed limits, no stop signs, and uh, it's right. Nobody going to push you around? Exactly. But there's also a bar there. Well, to get through this bar, you have to go through this highway. People crash because they're all drunk, and there's a big steep drop. and It's kind of a treacherous road, but that's why it's, it's called that. Anyways, this song is very good. I love they start with Malcolm doing the and you know you have an interjection from Phil Rudd and from Angus, and then it starts getting faster and faster, and then the song just explodes, and Bon Scott starts singing. It's crazy, uh, and again the backing vocals are crazy on this album, on this song. Uh, and oh my goodness, this is yeah, this is my favorite song. I love this. Every, this is the oh, oh my goodness, I love this song. It's great. I really like this song. This is uh, this made my top five. So yeah, this, uh, the one song that made my top five on the on side two. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's that's how good this song is. Um, I don't think, in my opinion, personal opinion, I don't think it's as good as the best songs on side one, but. I think it holds up really well compared to the other songs on this side. Um, you summed it up pretty well. Maybe, maybe one day, uh, as a, as a, what, what, forgot the name of the guy who used to do videos with Scott, but uh, maybe we could get a little tipsy. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, Joseph, we, Joseph, <laughs> Joseph, as Joseph would say, maybe we could get a little tipsy. We could uh, drive down the highway to hell oh, uh, while listening to Highway to Hell. <laughs> Man, I, I would. It would be cool if Joseph could do might get, make a cameo or something. He got out of the police academy now, so maybe he could make an appearance. Um, pro probably a video where I'm involved, but yeah, I'd like to see that. I know that was that was the other that's the other guy you're thinking of. Oh, 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 never mind. Yeah, I'd like to see Joseph. Maybe, maybe we could do uh maybe we could do a review with him someday. Um yeah, ask him if he wants to do a review someday. But uh going back going back to the review, yes, this is a great song. I love it. I can see why it's your favorite Tyler. It's really, really good. We got to the next song in the album, Love Hungry Man. This is Cliff Williams' moment to shine. Oh yeah. Do -do 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 -do. Mm -hmm. It is all about the bass on this one. That's really all I have to say about this song, but Cliff Williams on the bass. All right, yeah, this is a pretty good song. Again, the main focus of this song is Cliff on the bass. That bass riff is so cool. And he's going crazy um, throughout the other, the other parts of the song, too. And I, was, I was listening to I really started noticing, oh, 
there's more of that. Oh my goodness, Cliff Williams is killing it on the bass with this song. Uh, but yeah, the rest of the song is pretty good too. I I just noticed that bass throughout the whole song. It's like this is Cliff's song, and uh, I you get that sometimes you know throughout these albums, uh, Cliff Williams. Uh, they, sometimes they put a song, and Cliff Williams really just pops on one song, and it's really cool. I like this song. Um, again, this this didn't make my top five. Uh, this is my second least favorite on the album, in my opinion. Um, I think it's pretty good. Um, I will say the bass is really, really good. Um, I think the bass is what makes it really stand out. Um, yeah, this is another really good song on the album. Um, I quite liked it. Um, now we get to the last one on the album, Night Prowler. <sighs> I'm going to save the story for Tyler because I know he wants to tell the story. But what I'm going to say is this is a very eerie way to end the album, especially knowing that this is Bon Scott's last song. It's about a stalker. And I think it's funny at the end that he does an impression of Mark from Mark and Mindy. He goes, Giant Buck, no, 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 no. I think that's funny. That, that's, I think that's. That's odd that that's the last thing you, you hear Bon Scott say on his last album. But anyway, it's a it's a it's a moody way to end the album in Bon Scott's singing career. Yep, uh, I know this is a very eerie song, especially to end Bon Scott's career with. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh it's their most infamous song. It got them a lot of bad press. Uh, in the in the mid 80s after bon scott had already passed away and, and gone on but yeah just the opening of bon scott that sharp inhale and that bluesy menacing guitar lick starts it's like, oh this song is heavy this song is menacing it's got this oppressive dark tone to it it's really good and yeah the lyrics are very you know this guy is you know, he sleeps at the day, he's stalking people at night, breaking down their door. And, uh, yeah, so there was, um, in 85, so I'll touch on this a little bit when we do Fly on the Wall, but in 85 there was a serial killer who, uh, who had, uh, killed a lot of people in California at the time. And apparently he was an ACDC fan and loved this song in particular and got him all amped up to go out and do killing. And, you know, Malcolm and Angus had to quickly like, hey, hey, that's what, that, what the song's about. The song's about a, a boy trying to sneak into his girlfriend's room uh, while his parents are asleep. And it's like, it's not really about that, guys. Come on. But they're trying to save face and yeah, it, um, it got them a lot of bad publicity. Of course, you know, in the United States, a lot of their critics jumped on this and started to detract them. But, yeah, it's very chilling. But, um, yeah, it's hard to disguise the song with as a boy sneaking into his girlfriend's bedroom with lyrics such as, you don't feel the steel till it's hanging out your back. It's kind of hard to. Uh, no, it's about a murderer. Yeah, it's, it's, it's you can't kind of you can't brush that over. Uh, but yeah, this song's a, a great closer, and you know the last song with Bon Scott. Yeah, um, I really like this song, but this is my least favorite song on the album. Oh. Um, I liked it a lot, but ultimately this was the one that had to be on the bottom. Unfortunate. You know, knowing, knowing me, you probably thought, okay, Highway to Hell is probably going to be his least favorite on the album. You are No, I, I, Nick, I never make assumptions. Like, your list is always unpredictable, and that's a good thing. Good. Now I'm saying if you did, but, uh, yeah, this half, is my least favorite. Half the time, sometimes, like, sometimes the big hit is your least favorite, and sometimes it's higher up. It's, it's different depending on the album, because what's cool is that you go just by like how you feel about the songs, not necessarily as what's its status as the hit. What's mm -hmm. not the hit. Yeah, like Highway to Hell is is, is in my top five because it's a great song. Uh and and I'll I'll never be tired of Highway to Hell. Um but uh, this is a great song. I'm I'm still I still think it's a great song, but uh 
I really wish it would have ended on a, on a different song because if it ended on on like I want uh, uh, if it ended on if you want blood, it, this would definitely be my favorite album from them. That's just that was the tiny bit that kind of made me decide. But other than that, uh, Scott, what is your top five? Okay, number five, Highway to Hell. Number four is going to be uh, Shot Down in Flames. Number three, actually, no, no, take, take that back. Number four is Beating Around the Bush. Number three is going to be, um, I'm going to have to look at the list again. Okay, here it is right here. Number three, Walk All Over You. Number two, if you want blood, you got it. And number one, I'm actually going to put Touch Too Much. Oh, that's a good choice. I remember hearing that song and thinking, this is ACDC? Like, this is a completely different sound for them. Even though it's number seven on my ranking, I still really like it. Yeah, it's a really good song. All right, so uh, I guess I'll go next. Number five for me is going to be... Uh, okay, I'm going to give a couple of songs some honorable mentions. So I'm actually, oh man. So uh, Girls Got Rhythm and Touch Too Much are definitely honorable mentions. Uh, and uh, I'm going to have to go with Beating Around the Bush for another honorable mention. Uh, so number five for me is going be, uh, to be Walk All Over You. Uh, just barely beat out beat, Beating Around the Bush for me. Uh, number four is going to be Night Prowler. Number three is the title track. Number two is Shot Down in Flames. And number one is If You Want Blood. You got it. Okay. Um, makes me happy that uh, me and Tyler share Highway to Hell at number three. Um, number five, If You Want Blood. Number four, Girls Got Rhythm. Girls Got Rhythm. Number three, Highway to Hell. Number two, Being Around the Bush. Number one is... Uh, course ev everyone knows what this so song's gonna be it's gonna be uh vital signs oh uh no walk all over you that's walk all over you that's just it's a masterpiece um as for my honorable mentions it's every other song that wasn't in my top five so every other song in my top like every other song is a honorable mention um okay what are we gonna rate this album guys now, before I give my rating, I'm just going to have to give a little preface. Whenever I put in my, I factor in my ranking, one of the things I factor in is how much would I actually listen to this album. And while all of the songs are pretty good, I don't listen to this album as much, so I'm going to have to give it an 8.75. But this is one of ACDC's best efforts. In fact, it's my second favorite ACDC album. Cool. Ten. Ten. Don't fa don't factor my rating in. It's between yours and Tyler's for the average. Okay. Even though I think I know what the average is going to be. Ten out of ten, baby. Ten. 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 I mean, all these songs are on my ACDC. All these songs are on my ACDC playlist. I had to. It's a great album. I'm going to be going back to this album a lot. I own the album on record, so I don't have to search for it. Really, really good album. Um, again, going into the series, I'm going to be brutally honest. I'm an honest person for this. I like to be honest. I have low expectations for ACDC. Now that I've been going through this series, I've found a greater appreciation for them. Nice. So, I, found a, I found a little bit of an appreciation for Taylor Swift, but... ACDC, my, my respect went up the roof for, him, for them. They're just amazing group. Um, I'm sorry, Scott, that I have more ACDC albums ranked at 10 out of 10 and not the Beatles. I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Okay. That's just, I, I it's had not, to It's, like I said, it's, or I don't know if I said this before. I don't know why I said why, like I said, but um, if I didn't say it before, then I'm going to say it right now. It's, it's your ranking, so if you like it better, then that's that's up to you. Okay. I just wanted to personalize that. But uh, this was a great review. Um, hopefully next week we can cover 
the very, very legendary album to most people, which is Back in Black. Maybe I might really like it. Before I thought it was really overrated. Maybe I'm maybe my appreciation will go up for it as I well. Think you kind of got a feel for their sound. Exactly. We'll maybe see. I who knows? Maybe maybe the new singer might grow on me. Who knows? But for Tyler's sake, I hope so. For my sake, I hope so. For the world's for sake. For my sake, for Tyler's sake, for everyone's sake. Let's hope let's hope this next review will go well. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, this has been a really fun series going through ACDC, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. So long.